And St Kilda, Caro? They were she, woeful on the yeah, weekend, weren't they? Woeful, story. woeful on Thursday night. Behind the scenes, their president, Andrew Bassett, is leading the charge of the Victorian clubs against Northern Academies, against Father's Sons, wanting far less concessions given to those clubs. And I think there's a few people up north and in New South Wales a bit sick of Andrew Bassett and a bit disappointed given that they get these great um, academy picks once in, you know, once every few years. And there's disappointment there. Obviously, St Kilda have really struggled with father's sons. Most of their champions have had daughters. So that, I just keep waiting, Kane, for when they're going to bring in the big fish. Are they going to stay patient and rebuild through the draft? I mean, Graham Allen's been there as a consultant now for quite a few years. He's now there full time. They've brought in um, Davenport, who's got a great, great reputation. I really want to see what they do at the end of this year. The big fish don't move anymore. Not many big all, fi- there's not many big fish out there. They're all signed long term. Well, some really off- sensible early draft picks that actually live up to their draft But are, are they where you expect them? I thought I was excited by their pre-season, I must be honest, watching them train and Liam Henry. And, but it's amazing. Once Henry falls out, King falls out, Mason Wood gets injured, you know, Jimmy Webster gets suspended... It just shows how I don't, I don't think their depth. coach was all that excited it was about the fascinating. Prospect. Ross was almost uh, throwing shade on their prospects pre-game and then uh, backed over it after the game. We've had a lot of challenging, um, a challenging draw. Um, next week we'll have it'll be our third travel in four weeks. We've this will be our second five-day break, coming off a six-day break. So, um, and we're relatively young. So yeah, we're we're working to find find consistency. And hopefully as the schedule settles, we'll just get into a groove where we can train a bit more and, and work on our deficiencies. So I'm a little bit nervous about tonight, to be fair. I don't want to use excuses, but I certainly come here, I was cautious and I flagged even in a pre-game interview that oh, it was our second four-day prep. Is that what it is? It's three and 11 games. Three and 11 days. <laughs> yeah, so, but it's not an excuse, you know. I don't know, they, they might have had something similar. Some would love that honesty free game, but if you if that attitude had been reflected upon the players during the week, you would give them absolutely no chance. And they weren't playing a great side. They were playing the Western Bulldogs, who had been destroyed by Essendon in the previous week without Hugo Hagen and Libba. So uh, it's and been a lot of five day break excuses uh, from I, a lot of clubs and travel. Do you buy it? No, I don't. And I guess the start to the game as well, as I think Lord O, you pointed out, was they were really flat to start the game. So that's not really an excuse. There's no fatigue, there's no travel factor 10 minutes in when Cody Waitman's and Aaron Norton's making you look foolish. Statement game from the dogs. They can realign their season from here. Amit Baines was interesting before the game. He, well, he leapt to the defence of the coach and the critics of, uh, of which you are among them, Kane personalisation of some of it and the way it's directed at the coach at times is over the top. We feel that there's not much you can do about it other than perform and dispel it through wins and losses and shift the focus elsewhere. Is there pressure on Luke Beveridge for his job? Uh, no, no. We're, as I've said a couple of times, it's round five. He's contracted till the end of next year. A personal they, nature. Have they it? reached out to you at all the dogs? No. no. And, and I guess... Did you think that was in part aimed at you? I don't know. Uh, I don't they really did care. to me. I... They did to me. And um, it was pointed out to me that um, he hasn't been the only mouthpiece for the club, that Luke Beveridge has been the only mouthpiece. And, in fact, Kylie, um, I think Kylie Watson-Wheeler does a monthly spot on the ABC. Um, Amit Baines has given more interviews than I'd been aware of. So I, I take that criticism on board. But I don't take the criticism that we were personal to yeah, the can coach. Yeah, that's, that's the point that I want to pick up. If, if questioning their defensive action, if questioning the amount of goals they can see consecutively, if questioning bizarre selection decisions, if, if that's personal, like come, that, that is not personal criticism, that's professional criticism, and that criticism stacks up. It's amazing what happens when you play your best players in the positions that they should be playing in, and then you'll get the results. And a fascinating concession from Brad Johnson, who's a very respected commentator and who works part-time at the Bulldogs, about Luke Beveridge's messaging. Whether the, the outside gets into Bevo a little bit, I think I think every now and then it does because of the way that he, he talks within his press conferences and, and the, the way that he answers and, uh, and talks in riddles at different stages. So, therefore, for, for someone like Bevo, I think he's OK at the moment, but the W will certainly help and, and yeah. relieve a, a, a little bit of that pressure as well. That's extraordinary from Brad Johnson. Is that personal? Uh, well, he said he spoke, he pretty much said what you said last week. When you were a part-time forward coach at Essendon, would you have made a comment like that about oh, the coach? You prefer not to, Caro, <laughs> and that, that's a difficult part. That's why I don't think you get involved at clubs at all if you're in the media. It's just too hard.